77,000. Of that, more than 2,200 have died. In Hong Kong, 59 police officers are under quarantine after attending a banquet with one officer who later tested positive for coronavirus. We turn now to Meg Terrell with new details on the direction of the virus as more cases in the U.S. and Europe are confirmed. Meg. That's right. Well, health officials are now citing concerning numbers of cases in countries other than China. We mentioned last night Iran confirming five cases and two deaths. Today, that rose to 18 cases and four deaths. Cases also spiking in Italy from 3 to 17. And in South Korea, case numbers soaring to more than 200. In the U.S., two new confirmed cases in Northern California today, both people who had traveled from China. Additionally, the CDC said it expects more positive test results among the Americans evacuated from the Diamond Princess cruise ship. Because the passengers on the Diamond Princess were in cl a close setting where there has been a significant spread of COVID-19, they are considered at high risk for infection. Now, recall the U.S. evacuated more than 300 Americans from the ship earlier this week. And while they were traveling from the ship to the planes, 14 people's test results came back positive for the virus. Health authorities made the decision to complete the evacuation, keeping those 14 people separated from the other travelers. The CDC said today a total of 18 people from the Diamond Princess have now been confirmed with the virus in the United States. And let's bring in the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Dr. Anthony Fauci joins us again uh, once again this evening. And Dr. Fauci, thank you once again for being with us. Uh, we know you're part of the team who had to make that what must have been just a, a terrible, terribly hard decision uh, when you heard that these folks were given this news uh, in the middle of the evacuation process. The Washington Post reported yesterday the CDC was recommending against bringing those folks back still. Um, can you tell us about that decision-making process and whether the other folks on the plane were at any danger of being infected? Well, it, it was the right decision. There's no doubt about that. We wanted to get these individuals out of the uh, ship safely on a plane and back home. The plane was designed to have a section that you could essentially segregate people who were infected and protect the others on the plane from getting infected from them. And as it turned out, it worked out fine. The plane landed. The individuals who were infected and ill were taken immediately to the University of Nebraska Hospital, which has specialized capability of handling people and taking care of them in a containment facility. The rest were put under quarantine. So at the end of the day, it worked out very, very well. Although you're we right, it was a difficult decision, but it was the correct decision. Well, the Post reported that Ann Shookett from the CDC was concerned about infection control. So you can be absolutely sure that none of the folks on the plane were infected at this point. Well, you know, you can never be absolutely sure because those individuals very well could have gotten infected when they were on the boat. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be sh pure guessing as to what happened. At the end of the day, everything worked out fine. Dr. Fauci, what about once uh, those infected people are back here in the U.S.? Uh, how confident are you in the level of quarantine they're under, uh, including for the healthcare workers that are uh, helping them uh, yeah. recover? Well, they certainly are under the proper quarantine that's supervised by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So I don't have any doubt that the quality of the quarantine is going to be adequate to prevent any difficulties arising. They will be not let out into society until, in fact, it is clear that they are not infected. So what will happen is that they will go through the 14 days of the incubation period. They will be tested. If they're negative, they will go out, and there will be no danger to anyone. Dr. Fauci, some people in the last couple of days in particular have started to elevate their concerns as to whether this disease is already present in the U.S. and spreading across people who are otherwise apparently healthy. Is that something that's impossible to know either way for sure? And how, how worried are you about that possibility? Well, certainly it's a possibility, but it is extraordinarily unlikely. And let me explain why. The reason is if there were people who were actually spreading it, you would not have them identified, isolated and contact tracing, which means you'd have almost an exponential spread of an infection of which we're all looking out for. We have not seen that. So it is extremely unlikely that it's happening. However, not to be overconfident and to directly get some data, what the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are doing 
is picking out six sentinel cities where they will see people who come in with symptoms of the flu who test negative for the flu. They will then test them for the coronavirus. So it would be a good indication if we are, in fact, inadvertently missing cases of the coronavirus infection. So the pattern of what we're seeing argues against infections that we're missing. And what we're going to do preemptively will make it even more proof that that's not the case. So we're not relying on overconfidence. We're going to actually look for the data. Dr. Fauci, you mentioned six cities. We had heard five were going to be using their flu surveillance system. What's the additional city? Honolulu. Oh, wow. Okay. And we know that only three states now uh, have the capacity to use the CDC-developed lab test uh, because of some of the hiccups uh, in rolling that out. So uh, will most of these cities be having to send the tests back to CDC? Right. For the time being, they will have to send it to the CDC, who will as quickly and expeditiously as possible get the results back to them. But the CDC is hoping that pretty soon they'll be able to redisperse those kits so that many centers can do it. But Dr. for the time being now, the CDC is doing it. Dr. Fauci, you always speak uh, very authoritatively and inspire quite a lot of confidence in, in the many interviews you've done with us on CNBC the last couple of weeks. Do you have the same level of, of confidence uh, for other countries which are repatriating people, whether from this cruise ship or, or from other sites, whether that's the UK, Italy, uh, uh, South Korea, for example? Well, you make a very good point. I certainly have a confidence in our ability here in the United States to do the identification, isolation, contact tracing, and quarantine where appropriate. But I can't speak with that confidence for every country where there are travel-related cases from China. And that really is going to be the weak link in the chain of these events. Because if we have other countries where you have one or more or several travel-related cases, but they do not stop the sustained transmission from person to person to person, then you have the making of a mini-outbreak in any given country. If you have multiple countries that either don't have the capability or fail, even with the capability, to prevent these multiple generations of infections, which, as I mentioned, we're not seeing in the United States, but if you have multiple countries that are doing that, then you have the makings of a pandemic, and that's something that would be very serious. Mm -hmm.